Hello and welcome to All Around the Board. You guys did it. You gave me the 50 likes on Dynagenics, so here we go. This is Dynagenics Control Chaos. This is the expansion to Dynagenics. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything that is inside Controlled Chaos. I'll be telling you how to play, how to incorporate, there's a couple of different modules in there as well, and how it works mixed with the base game. And at the very end, as always, I will give my final thoughts on this one. Just as a small spoiler, you guys need to watch because this is incredible. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. So here we go guys, this is Dynagenics Control Chaos. Thanks so much for all the likes that you gave on Dynagenics to make this one possible. So let's go ahead and see all the things it adds. So let's just take a moment here and uh, yeah, all the, this stuff that it adds and I'm gonna explain everything that is here so it makes sense for you guys. But before we take a look at everything here that it adds, I think we should have a look at the very important Dino Meeples. Look at these guys. Twice as many Dino Meeples being added to this expansion as there are in the base game. Up here you've got the four elite dinosaurs, so that's one of the modules you can add. And then these are your aquatic dinosaurs plus two land dinosaurs there, but look how cool they are. Just before I show you how to set up using the expansion, there are a few items that I would like you guys just to separate for now. These are the items that are only going to be used in the cooperative module. So firstly, there are a whole pile of breaking news cards that you need to take out. These all have something called synth on them. They're easily identifiable because they've got S followed by a number. So this is SO4, and you look through there, they've all got S followed by a number. Take those out completely. There are three biodomes as well that actually say synth biodome on the side, so take those three out. And also there's one aquatic habitat that also says synth aquatic on it. Take those items out for now, they will not be used for now. Okay, so let's start by getting this main board out here. So just lay that out and then depending on the amount of players you're playing with, depends on if you need to cover up a few worker spaces. Then you need to shuffle the eDNA deck. These are your aquatic animals that will get shuffled and popped into a deck. Also to note that you have the polymorphic DNA cards that also get shuffled in with those. They act as a wild DNA card. And if you'd like to play with the Elite Dinosaurs expansion, I would highly recommend shuffling these cards in as well. These are identifiable because they have a green number in the top right hand corner. So this is optional if you want to choose and shuffle those in. I would highly recommend adding those because it does make for an interesting game and you get to use these dinosaur meeples here. Then just get your supply of these tokens here and just add them to the space here or you could put them to the side if you like. These are your wild DNA tokens. Then if you get the eight aquatic habitat tiles and pop them on the top left space here where it says aquatic habitats. These will always be available to players throughout the game just in this space here. Then get all the double size facility tokens, give them a shuffle and then deal five out. What will happen throughout the game is when players buy these they will automatically get replaced as you go. There aren't a whole load of them, but they are more expensive than the single ones, so they are slightly harder to get. Then you need to take this deck of cards here, and these are your specialists. You're going to shuffle them and pop them on the job market draw pile, and then you're simply going to deal out three cards just like I have here. Then take these two die, which are called the upkeep die, and just pop them on this space here, and then grab one of these dino meeples and just put it in this area as well. This expansion comes with a whole stack of manipulation cards, so you can go ahead and shuffle them into this deck and pop them onto the main board. It comes with some additional breaking news cards, again, shuffle those into the main deck and pop those on the main board. If you guys want to play with the Chaos Theory module, then feel free to take these red cards and you can also shuffle those into the breaking news deck. I would recommend doing it, however they got some very take that abilities in there and it might make for a more nasty game. 
And then we have the land animals that this game comes with. And they will get shuffled and put into the main DNA deck and pop those on the board as well. Then take all the single facility tiles and pop them into the bag. It is worth noting that we have a mammoth exhibit, which these meeples go on. And we have an Amorite exhibit, which these meeples go on. But you can go ahead and pop these tiles in the bag as well. The expansion comes with a first player token, which is used to signify who is going to be the first player of each round. We have the crash site tokens, which are going to be used in the cooperative module, but they can also be used for the chaos theory cards as well. And this is probably the funniest token to add. These are 10 money tokens, which signifies that apparently at some point we would have 10 money. I'm not sure when, but hey ho, they're there anyway. And finally, this comes with a reference sheet on the underside of this sheet has got all the facility references, the double ones and the singular ones that went in the bag. And then on this side, it's got all the new dinosaurs, including the elite module ones here as well. And I've just gone ahead and popped a meeple on each one just to make it look cool. But that this is where you'll go for all the abilities that are added. There are some awesome new abilities on these dinosaurs. And that is everything you need to do to set up the expansion. Now we're going to talk about the different actions that this game adds. When you go to Site D, you will spend one money, you will draw three cards from the eDNA deck, and then discard one. So you're essentially going to be drawing two out of three of these cards here, and these are the aquatic animals. When you go to the refinement space, you can discard one money and any DNA card, which could be either an eDNA card or a normal DNA card, and then you can take one of these tokens, which acts as a wild DNA. Then when you go to this space, it says here that you can take any two actions. There are three actions within this, but this one says any two actions. It doesn't have to be different ones like the HQ on the base game. This one says you can purchase a facility, or a large one here, so you can spend two money to get one of your aquatic ones, or you can pay money to take these. At the end of this action, you get to refill them straight away. When purchasing a large facility, it is worth noting that it can either go this way or it can be turned vertically. That's absolutely fine. The other action you can do here is gain a specialist. So what you will do is you will discard as many manipulation cards as you have, depending on the number on the left-hand side on these specialists. So on this one, I have to discard one manipulation card to take this. This one will be two and this will be one. It is worth noting that if you take from this space here, then you not only have to get rid of the cards, but you also have to spend two money. So this one is more expensive. When you receive a specialist, it's going to have an ongoing effect and an end game effect. Some of them just have an end game effect though, and these are all unique, so I won't go through them individually, but they pretty much just tell you what you need to do. They're quite self-explanatory. On the upkeep phase, the first two will go, this will move up, and then two more will get dealt. So whatever's here is gonna end up costing you more. If throughout the round these had been bought, this one simply moves up and you just deal two. Essentially, you're always going to refill two on this every turn. So you're gonna get through these specialists quite quick. And then the final action in this space is resolve an open ocean roll. So what we have here is our two upkeep die. Roll two upkeep die and pay the combined credit cost rolled to get this in your park. Now I cannot pronounce its name. That's what it is. It's it's this meeple here. Ple Plesiosaurus. I'm gonna go with that. I think it's a Plesiosaurus, maybe. Anyway, so what we'll do is you'll roll these two die and whatever the number is, is the amount of money you have to pay. So that would be a six. If I rolled, say, that, it says here, pay double the revealed amount. So that would mean I'd have to pay eight. And if I rolled double of this symbol here, that is a failure to capture and I lose a VP. Also worth noting that say if I rolled this and I had to pay six, but I couldn't or I didn't want to, I would also lose a VP as well. So some extra information about these eDNA cards. These do count towards your hand limit of 10. So you can have a mixture of these and these, but the hand limit is still 10. To get the aquatic dinosaurs, you still need to go to the Dynagenics IOM space on the main board of the game. 
You then hand in as many cards as the top right hand corner, which is exactly the same as how you do these DNA cards here. So for this one, I would discard three cards and then I would get this animal. In order to put your aquatic dinosaur down, you must have an aquatic habitat. An aquatic habitat has got two spaces. This will either allow for two singular dinosaurs. You are allowed to mix the singular dinosaurs as well, as long as they're aquatic. They do not rampage. Or it can host one large aquatic animal. So this one here is a large one. So is the Megalodon. And also the Spinosaurus counts as double as well. Now it is worth noting that if you do not pay for your aquatic animals, they can still rampage. Instead of using the normal rampage die, you're going to be using one of the upkeep die that you can get from this area here. What you're going to do is you're going to roll the die. If it comes up with a number, that is the amount of money you must pay to keep this intact. If I roll the drown symbol, well, unfortunately, this is going to break anyway. If I cannot pay or I do not want to, or if I've rolled this symbol here, this is going to break. Okay, so this will flip to the other side. Additionally, if you've rolled this symbol, then you must get rid of a visitor and take a scandal token. Even though the animal will not go, not only will you lose points at the end of the game if this is not repaired, but also this will go back down. So where this would have got me five points per round, it's not going to get me any points until this is repaired. And that is everything you need to know to play Dynagenix Control Chaos. So a big question is, guys, would you like to see either the solo scenarios played or the two-player cooperative version. If you'd like to see either of those, please leave comments below, and at some point I'll get around to doing them, but only if you guys want to see them. Wow, there we go. That was Control Chaos in a nutshell. Like I said at the beginning of the video, absolutely incredible. Yeah, okay, so this is what I want to say about it, right? If you go back to the Dynagenics video, I said that at first it was okay, it seemed a bit basic, but then I saw the end game, and I saw the way that you could get different points. I then went and played it again, and yeah, I really loved it, and I could see quite a potential in this game. Then I got the expansion out, and I finally got to try with the expansion. Oh my goodness, there is a lot added to this. There are a lot more dinosaurs. I think there's almost twice as many dinosaurs as there are in this one as there are in here. Some of them are harder to get, but there are ways of controlling, you know, potentially that luck aspect. In Dynagenics, the base game, there are lots of different ways to get the DNA cards. However, I did spend my very first game, a couple of rounds, looking for one Triceratops card, um, which I guess if the deck's not shuffled to your favour, could be quite annoying. In Control Chaos, though, don't worry about that, because you've got wild DNA and you've got the discs that I showed you that add as the, the, the missing DNA that you're looking for. So it takes away that element of luck, even though there wasn't much luck in it at all. I, I mean, I was just unlucky that it took me that long. And in hindsight, maybe I should have looked for a different dinosaur to create. But yes, I, this just fixed that for one. I really like the expert dinosaur module. In fact, I wouldn't play without it. I think it's absolutely fine just to be included. It says it's for an expert variant, but Honestly, I'd just include it, and you get some more dinosaurs in your park. And the Chaos Theory module is epic. There is a little bit more take that. Yes, it could end up really screwing with your opponents, but uh, especially if you're playing with five players, I can see that being very interesting indeed. And in Dynagenics Control Chaos, there is a two-player cooperative version, which myself and my partner have played. One of you plays the East Branch, the other one plays the West Branch. You're essentially two different parks, but you're working for the same company. And then there is a third separate park that you are going against, which is all automated via dice roll. Now, their actions are very interesting, depending on if it's early game or late game, depends on the different actions that they get. But that is all automated. It acts as a third player in terms of worker placement as well. So you'll roll the die and it will tell you where to put their worker. So it essentially starts blocking spaces that maybe you want to go to. And what I quite like about that is the opponent has a turn. Um, then we will have a turn, but collectively. So it could be that I could go first and Jake goes first, or vice versa, depending on the actions available to us at the time. 
I really like that there is an additional action where you can go to the other person's park and you could essentially trade DNA cards. I really like that aspect. And again, it takes out that kind of luck element if you're not drawing the right cards. But what I quite like about that mostly is the fact that it feels like a solo game, but you are playing it as a pair. But yeah, they are the three modules inside that just make the game even better than it already was. I really like those small little additions. I really like the fact that they've separated the eDNA deck so that it's all the aquatic animals and the expert animals in there. So if you're looking for one of those specifically, you can go through just one of the decks and not potentially both decks mixed together because <laughs> you could be a while just trying to find the animal you're looking for. I like that the aquatic pens are really cheap. So actually you are incorporating the expansion quite a lot. It's really nice to have a mixture of different types of animals. It does fill up your park a lot quicker though. Like I said in the original Dynagenics video, the fact that I filled up my park really quickly and I just wish there was a little bit more room to work with. But actually, yeah, getting the aquatic animals, even though it takes up two spaces, that's another two animals you can get in. And it doesn't matter if they are the same aquatic animal. You can mix them. It does depend on the size. There are some two size ones, but they're obviously harder to get. But yeah, a lovely little addition there. One big thing to consider is Dynagenics is already a table hog. I've got a six foot table, and if you saw in the last video, it took up the majority of my table just as a two player game. This one adds a whole nother board, so you need to try and find some more room. Even playing with two players around my table, it'd be a squeeze. I would have room for a third player. I very much doubt I'd have room for five players. So if you're gonna get it, you might have to invest in a large table at the same time. But yes, I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching Dynagenics Control Chaos. Thanks for making it possible by giving me all the likes and support on the original Dynagenics. What a fantastic addition to the game. I only hope that at some point they're going to add to this game. There's enough here, don't get me wrong, but I, I'm really looking forward to seeing if they do anything more for this game. If you have any questions about Dynagenics or the Controlled Chaos expansion, please feel free to leave comments below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already, go back and check my Dynagenics video out. It was very popular, I'm really pleased with how it went. Uh, in that video I tell you how to play it, how to set it up, and maybe it will make this expansion a little bit easier for you to play if you haven't already played the base game. Please consider following me on Facebook, Instagram and on Twitter. On there, especially on my Instagram, there are lots of pictures of specifically Dynagenics at the moment because it's a really good game. It's getting some great photographs. As I said in the Dynagenics video, I just cannot stop taking pictures of it. <laughs> And please consider checking out my Patreon page for as little as £1. You can help support me make these videos. The money is going towards better gear, better quality, and getting more videos like Dynagenics your way. And the most important thing, like I say on all my videos, it's really important that you guys subscribe because that means a lot to me and it does help support this channel a lot. The more subscribers, the more reason for me to make these videos. But in the meantime, I will say goodbye and catch you on the next video.